Mike Poe started working with my dad back in 1970 on a show called Toma, but their friendship started long before that. Now, while they both met at the same place, at the same time, on the same day, they both seem to tell a different story. You'll see what I mean. Okay. Now, I'm sure that he has a version of the way we met. And to begin with, for a guy who writes music, his version is pretty much pure fiction. This story has been told many times, many different ways. Anyone that knows anything about Stephen J. Cannell knows that he's dyslexic. He uses that as an excuse for a very faulty memory or just a, a personality that can't stop lying. I met Michael in August of 1968. I was actually down at my parents' be a beach house in Newport Beach, California. It was right on the water. And what I used to do is I'd get up very early in the morning and I'd go out and I'd put uh, blankets and backrests out in front of our house, um, play pen because we had a little boy, our, our firstborn, and, and, um, and then I would go back inside and I would go into the front room of my parents' beach house and I would start to write a script. At the time I was writing my first network television show, it was an episode of It Takes a Thief, which was on ABC. So I'm in there and I'm writing and as I start about, you know, about five in the morning or something and about eight o'clock. Seven o'clock in the morning, it wasn't even sunny yet, overcast, we jump over this little seawall and there's all these towels right where I wanted to sit. So I was young and stupid and, and impetuous and, and, and a punk, a, a, a valley boy punk. And I was with my big brother who uh, was not a punk, he was very large. I look out the window and out there where I know I put up our playpen and all of our backrests and everything, I see two guys putting an umbrella into the sand and setting up their playpens and stuff right on top of where I know our stuff was. So I walk out and I say to these two guys, what are you doing? Quit moving my towels. And I, I said, I'm not moving any towels. Hey, we're not doing anything. Hey, what are you talking about? You know, blah, blah, you know, and it, was, you know it, 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 to be like, honest with you, it kind of pissed me off a little bit. So. I climbed over the seawall there. And so I jump back over the seawall and I start to walk up his little walkway and I think, you know, I'm going to smack this guy. And then the closer I get, the bigger he gets. I mean, now I go, wow, this is a large person. You know, this, I'm going to have to hit this guy really hard and, and quickly. And I said, why don't you just unwind it a little bit, buddy, you know? And he's giving me a lot of cha-cha. And I'm looking at him, I thought, this kid needs to hit the ground. I mean, that was my initial um, thought. The only problem I had with that was there were two of them and only one of me. And his brother Buddy was about 220. Uh, Mike, on the other hand, was about four foot nothing and weighed about 110. And I figured, you know, he was just one easy right cross. But I was a little concerned about Buddy. At the time, he went about 225, 230, very large, really mean. And he goes, listen, you know, um, this is my little brother. And if, if, if there's a problem, you know, then I'm going to have to get involved. He said, now, he said, how tall are you? And the guy said, 6'1 or 6'2, whatever he says. So what do you weigh? He says, 190. And uh, he said, well, he's only 5'8 and he's, you know, 165 pounds. You know, he said, but he's tenacious. You know, he'll probably get you. But if he doesn't get you, I'm going to send you to the hospital. So the guy with the little cigar looks at my brother and he goes, oh, okay. He looks at me and I'm standing there like this. And he goes, yeah, and he walks back in the house. Walks back in the house. I don't care what he says to you. I don't care how he denies all this. He's full of it. Bud steps forward, and he says to me, don't hit my little brother. And I said, uh, you know, then you better get him to shut up because he's, he's, he's moving in the wrong direction. And Bud says, you go back inside, and we will put your stuff back where it belongs. And that was the deal I struck with these two pussies. He walked back in the house, which he was right to walk back in the house. We'd have killed him together. So I walked about 50 feet and the guilt set in and I just went, oh no, I got to grow up. I, what, how can I possibly, you know, I can't be this way anymore. And I went back inside and they put their stuff back on the beach, right where it was, where I left mine, indicating of course, that I had won the conflict. And, and then the, I come out that, that about 12 o'clock with my wife that, that uh, afternoon. And I walked over and apologized. And I said, there's no excuse. I was a jerk. 
please, please accept my apology. And of course, he was very nice. I mean, he was, ah, oh, there's plenty of room for everybody. I don't know, I was just, in, you know, and I said, well, we'd been drinking the night before, we were a little hungover and blah, 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 blah. And surprise of all surprises, it turned out I did actually like this, this guy. So over the next two weeks' time, we went water skiing together. We threw the football. Game. Now that I find this guy's a good athlete. And by the way, the truth be told, he could have cleaned my clock. You know, he really could have. He can't now because he's old, but he could then. But the issue of this fight is that, you know, Mike has this, this need to say that I backed down, uh, ignoring all the facts of the circumstance. So, so I'm just here basically to say that that didn't happen. Uh, and if you want a collaborating uh, account of this story, we can get his brother Bud to come in and tell his side of the story, and it matches mine perfectly. So that's the story of how Mike Post and I met.